Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at the pre-built i75 directly from Leobot. Now I have previously done a build with the bare bones version that was sent to me by uh, WhatGeek, but Leobot reached out to me directly and said, hey, would you like to take a look at the pre-built version? And I said, absolutely. I'd like to hear how it comes directly from you guys. So, if you guys don't know about Leobog, they're a newer company. They have um, come out with quite a few interesting keyboards. They have a few plastic keyboards. I've reviewed one just recently, the K81, which is a transparent one. and actually sounded much better than I expected it to. They have the High 75, and then there's the High 8, which is basically the wireless version of this one, though. It's supposed to have a little bit better construction. The High 8 is one that they're going to be sending me out for review after this one, and I look forward to taking a look at that one because it's a lot of people have been asking me, when are you going to review the High 8? When are you going to review the High 8? <laughs> it's like, I've got a long list, but I'll get to it once Leo Bag sends it to me. Apparently, it's quite hot right now, and they didn't have enough stock to allow for a review unit, but they said they should be restocking here shortly. Everybody's coming back from the Chinese New Year holiday, and it's still kind of, everybody's just trying to ramp back up. You know how it is after Christmas. It's like, oh, it's January. I got to work again. Oh, it's just like, it can take a few days to get everything back in order. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open up and take a look at this high 75. All right, before taking a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in the box. We have a nice user manual. It does seem to come in both English and Chinese. And um, this company, S-O-A, I want to say I, um, Suoi, Suoi, I can't pronounce it properly. Um, they're the parent company of both Leo Bond and Ala. Both of these have been coming out with some amazing keyboards that sound just ready to go out of the box, feel amazing, and they're just well built. Um, I'm using currently the Ala F87 as my uh, daily driver today. Um, I switch them out uh, very often. I have been using the Gem 80, and despite the Gem 80 being much, much better right now, they're still trying to figure out an issue with QMK. They've got a debounce issue, so there is sometimes some keys missing, sometimes double key presses. But I'm pretty sure it's a debounce rate. I'm hoping for them to allow me access to their current QMK source because I'm pretty sure that I could fix it um, just with a few changes and building the firmware than testing it. But anyway, um, we have a nice manual here. We also have a um, section for warranty. So I have not heard of any issues with any Leo Boggs uh, as of yet, but they do have a warranty card. So this is a very important that companies provide this and you can contact them through their website through their discord uh, several other different ways and i haven't heard of any complaints at all but they are easily accessible so if you do have an issue you can reach out to them but i definitely fill out this warranty card then we have a nice little handy dandy user guide uh congratulations on becoming an honorable leo bog high 75 Hey, I'm honorable. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, the rest of it, I mean, yeah, we have wired, USB, and then uh, the rest of this is in Chinese, but I'm guessing that might be modes. Q is Android, W is Windows, E is Mac, and R is iOS. So it's actually got four different operating modes, which is pretty cool. Setting the keyboard aside for a second. Let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, we've got a Leo Bog badge. We have the stickers that go where the lights go. And then we have a Type C label. And these are kind of like the magnetic. They're a little bit thicker than normal paper, uh, but they're shiny magnetic. So if you want to add the branding to it, you can, but you don't have to worry about taking off the branding in case you don't want it, which I think is a pretty, uh, pretty good, uh, feature because I mean some people just like the clean look I mean obviously they know what it is and if somebody asks them what keyboard is that it's not like they're gonna be like oh I forget <laughs> I mean it is on the bottom of the keyboard let's see what we have in the accessory box we have a nice uh, switch and keycap puller 
that is branded with Leo Bog, and I actually like these with the uh, finger in the middle so that you can get a bit of leverage when you're pulling. So these are some of my more preferred switch cap or switch and key cap pullers. We have a few, a couple of extra switches, which is always nice. I really appreciate it when manufacturers include extra switches because who knows what could happen. So this is a dust proof. It is a Leo Bog. Um, it's a linear. It probably has about a 3.8 millimeter travel, maybe 3.6. No ping whatsoever. It's, um, I'd say probably around a 45 gram uh, weight spring. We'd have, to, we're, we'll get some more information on it when we get to the technical section. And then we have a nicely nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cable with the coil. The coil, it's just retro, it's old school. It reminds me of all the ways computers used to be. And I mean, not don't get me wrong, I don't want to go back to 4.77 megahertz. <laughs> but that's when I started on computers in the 80s. Um, anywhere from Big 20s to Commodore 64s and 128s. Um, I had a PS2, I had a PC Junior, I had a 5150. I had quite a few. I got... I was lucky my um, stepdad had a couple of businesses and anytime a computer was like, oh, we'll buy a new one, he'd just be like, here, here you go, you got a new computer. And I did. I had, I had a room. I had a room just for computers when I was a kid. So a lot of my friends would come over and they'd be like, oh, wow. So um, I got to get into the computer world quite early and I do appreciate that. Now we do have a uh, dust proof cover, but unfortunately this one seems to have taken damage, but I think it would still work. Though I still have a couple other ones. This one isn't like specifically for this one. It's just gonna be a 75%. So other ones should work, but I don't know how this happened because I mean, the rest of it is fine. So, hmm, odd. And here we are with the Leo Bog High 75 pre-built. It's got, um, I do believe that this is a, um, clone of uh, illusory or illusion i'm not sure i can't keep up with the number of keycap sets every day i'm like what's that keycap set and it's sometimes it's new sometimes it's been around for a while there's just so many of them this one i gotta say i like um the profile huh could could be an mda it is sculpted i'll have to look that up but it has the big legends and i love the big legends for myself that's just it's top notch it's um i mean i don't know i guess just because i kind of feel when the legends are tiny up there and they're leaving all this white space it's kind of like we're scared we're gonna hide up in the corner why not just take up the whole i mean unless you're, you're using sub legends why shouldn't the legend take up the entire key? I don't know. I think it should, but that's just me. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have under the stabilizers. All right, so we've got these switches. Again, I will look them up to make sure exactly what they are, but they're a nice, sharp, linear, with a very uh, muted yet deeper bottom out, which is always nice. So we've got some. St so we got some stabilizers here that are maybe a little bit over lubed, but they are well attached to the plate. We have a layer of IXPE, and we also have a layer of PET directly above the PCB and then it looks like we have some nice open cell foam then it looks like we have some nice open cell foam below the PCB all right let's take them out here now so it looks like we have palm stabilizers these are the newer ones that have this bar down at the bottom that prevent any of that ticking on the plate 
Um, now these definitely have a bit too much grease on there, but for stock, I'm going to leave them alone. I probably will come back to them and just clean them up. Though I didn't really notice much of an issue. Usually if there's too much, they um, get the feeling a bit mushy. But I think these feel just fine. They feel and sound just fine. Let's see what we have under here. All right, there we see that's how the top case is attached. I still have to um, disassemble one of these. I haven't yet. I just haven't had the chance. But we have an OC Pass sticker. Very nice. Looks like oh, sometime in 2023. Forgot to punch out the month. Okay, all right. Looks like we have 1.6 millimeters of thickness. Wow. They just continue to get better and better as far as thickness of the body. I mean, these are some solid keycaps. There's no. Uh, <laughs> we're not dealing with the uh, the GMK seesaw space bar. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll stop. I will not. So yeah, we have a really lovely sounding stock keyboard we also <laughs> i did not know this for quite some time there's a magnet there um so you can make these or you can get these badges i don't know if there's other ones i do i must say i do like the astronaut logo and he's also down at the bottom waving high and i love the planet um i just gotta say for the price of this keyboard the value is honestly insane um now a lot of people don't like this this clear knob i actually i the fact that it presses and it turns is enough for me and light comes out through it actually let me confirm before i actually say something that's not true yeah we got an led in there but the a lot of people may not like this um particular knob now it is a bit of a it's on there pretty good i'm using a plastic spudger to make sure not to damage the finish oh, all right so see this is how this knob is made it's got an outer collar and it's got this inner piece but you can go on aliexpress and buy replacements of these and this is what you have, what you purchase. I think I got mine, I want to say for, it was either 5 or $7 with free shipping. But I did order some other stuff that would have been shipping. But it wasn't because it was over 10 or $20. But um, this is the, uh, if for some reason you don't like that clear see-through window, which I understand some people don't, you put it in. But it is a bit of a, uh, it's a bit tricky to put it in. Though, I mean, it is on there good. Don't get me wrong. I've got some keyboards that some knobs just fall off. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, if it like gets turned upside down, it's just sitting on my desk, it'll be fine. But you ha basically have to find the right, right spot to get the collar in and then find the right spot to get the insert in. And you see two of these edges have the clip and I think there, like this, I think. Yep, there we go. So it's really, you're pressing on that center button that's activating the, but, the um, button underneath. But if for some reason, like I said, you don't like it, you can get that as a replacement and then not have that clear see-through window. I really don't mind either way. I got this just to show that, you know, it is possible to do it, so. Um, and I do believe now they actually have some different color knobs as well as different color inserts. I think when I first got it, there was really only the white. So, um, I'll do, I'll do my best to remember to add some links down below. Uh, though the only place I've seen them is on AliExpress though. I don't think I've checked Leo Bog site. Let me check Leo Bog site. And if they have it on there, I'll link from there. 
But this keyboard, I mean, we've got 1.6 millimeter double shot keycaps and, and they feel like PVT to me, but I will confirm in my technical section. And if you guys notice, I do technical section for pre-built keyboards, but I don't do them for kits. Um, no one's ever asked, but if you guys think that I should do it for any and all keyboards, um, cause I'm going to be switching up my switch review game and doing a technical section there too. And I like to basically do the technical section with the facts and then everything else about the video is, you know, obviously my opinion, my take on particular things, but the technical section are just the facts and nothing more. So, um, just the facts, ma'am. I know that's an old reference. Just talking to a friend about uh, Dune and Star Wars and how Star Wars was really influenced by Dune. But Star Wars has a little bit of corniness. And I was like, yeah, Star Wars has corniness. I think that's part of the reason why it became so popular with such a wide audience. Because, I mean, <laughs> the American audience loves corniness. <laughs> I mean, just look at... Uh, Anything from Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, which, by the way, I'm an extra in that movie, believe it or not, um, to say, like, uh, Austin Powers, uh, International Man of Mystery, and Team America. I mean, there's just a bunch of uh, coininess in some of the bigger movies, whether they be comedies or not. And don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars. I, I love Star Wars to death. i not the biggest fan of, like, say, the... Um, the early 2001s and some of the newer movies. I mean, there's just been some storylines that just kind of kind of lose me. So, but I still watch it because, I mean, it's sci-fi and that's my favorite. But anyway, I'm going off topic here. I do also want to find out if they have other badges. I'm actually thinking if I could actually print something that I could stick this into so that it'll stick, but it would give me you know, something else that would match with the colorway. Like I said, I, I believe this is either illusion or illusory. I actually have one of these keycap sets in cherry, um, but I've yet to load it up on any keyboard. The, this is just a lovely keyboard. They're coming out and they're getting better and better. Each, I, I used to say like, well, oh, every month we're seeing a new keyboard. Nowadays, it feels like almost every other day we're seeing a new keyboard. Like I said, Leo Bog is a new entrant into the game, but they've already made a big splash with the Ola keyboards, like the F87, um, the F75, as well as, you know, with the Leo Bogs, the High 8, uh, High 75, this one, um, because they're well priced and they're ready to go out of the box. I mean, many keyboards I bought prior to six months ago it was like okay yeah that sounds pretty good but i'm gonna do this this and this to it first before i feel like it's ready to go nowadays i feel like a lot of these keyboards it's just a matter of changing things around if you want to get a different sound profile but if you're looking for that creamy marbly thotty a lot of these keyboards are coming with that out of the gate right out of the box ready to go and i mean don't get me wrong, I'm still going to mod keyboards, but for those that don't have the time, you know, are afraid of breaking anything, um, or any number of reasons why, and if they want a keyboard that sounds like this, they no longer have to put in all the effort. They can just go out and buy it, and it's not like it's going to cost them, you know, an arm and a leg. And this keyboard, like I said, I'm still waiting to try the Hi8. The fact that there's so many options available now really just... It tickles my fancy. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Leo Bog High 75, a pre-built directly from Leo Bog. This is a 75% wired keyboard with a two-mode function knob. It does have IXPE and PET layers above the PCB, as well as foam between the plate and PCB and below the PCB. It also has a replaceable center for the knob. It includes a gasket mounted PC plate and a hot swap south facing 3 and 5 pin PCB. It also includes a magnetic badge near the escape and F1 key. It comes preloaded with MDA double shot, what I believe are PBT, 
white and purple keycaps, though there are a couple of key choices, as well as switch choices of either building block tactiles or Nimbus linear switches, both from Leobog. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 and a half millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 35 and a half millimeters, providing for a typing angle of eight degrees. The keyboard comes weighing in at 1,504 grams and MSRPs for $99 fully loaded from Leobog website. So they don't say if these are PBT, but I'm almost positive they are from the feel of them and the fact that they just, they don't feel like ABS keycaps to me, but I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna reach out to um, the marketing uh, associate that I was dealing with and see if he can answer that and I'll update the description down below. But what we get for $99, full set of switches, full set of 1.6 millimeter keycaps, a dual mode um, knob, basically you compress and hold it for a few seconds and it will change to controlling the lights. All right, now it's on volume. Press and hold for, I think it's like three seconds. I wish there was an indicator to let you know. Actually there is, but it, I, I covered it up. Um, if the light is always on, then it's in gaming mode for, or it's in regular mode for volume. And if it's off, it's in gaming mode. So, but once you have it in that mode, you can cycle through Oh, the, um, for turning it, it's the brightness, but short presses will take you through the different light effects. So no more having to remember which key combination changes the key colors. And then you press and hold again, it goes back to being your volume control, which um, I gotta say, that is pretty nice. Um, the stabilizers, though a little bit over lubricated, do not feel mushy at all. They're nice and, I mean, a space bar that sounds like that out of the box, come on. And all of this for only $99, it's just, it's getting crazy out there, folks. I mean, these keyboards are just, they're, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that we could have even imagined even a couple of years ago that the prices would go down to where they are and the quality would come up. It's just crazy. Uh, MDA is a um, it's almost like a shorter cherry, but I kind of like it. Um, it's it's a middle ground in my opinion between like a XDA or an XVX profile and a cherry profile since they're a little bit shorter than, than cherry. Don't take long to get used to it all actually. XDA was probably the, the keycap set or the keycap profile that took me the longest to get used to. So the software, the software is one of the better closed source software that's out there. I've seen it for a few different manufacturers. Obviously it's the same for all of you have a function one, a function two layer, as well as a tap layer, which basically just means tapping on a key will activate something different. You can program it to mouse controls, multimedia controls, practically everything. You can do per key RGB or user defined. You can do your macros. Um, you can set sleep. Um, it checks for firmware updates. There wasn't any for this one. It was already up to date, but it is pretty well-rounded and fully functional. It's going to work for most people. Obviously, um, I have to program it in Windows, but then I can take it and plug it into my Linux box and I set up, I basically just set the, the backlight for any of the highlight colors to purple and the rest to blue. And just, just a quick user to find, but just to show that the settings are stored on the keyboard. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're not going to get keyboard manufacturers to release I mean, it would be a lot of effort for them to actually make, you know, a separate executable for both Windows, Macintosh, and even Linux, I doubt. <laughs> even though Linux, I think, is um, one of the top operating systems, or at least has a good percentage of the market in China, if I'm not mistaken. With this Leobog, like I said before, this is an extremely good value. Uh, most people are going to be happy with the way that it sounds out of the box, whether they get the Nimbus Linear, or the, um, the tactile switches that they have. 
um, Leo Boggs, which is I still get to encounter one that I didn't like, <laughs> which is a uh, kind of funny. I'm curious who the manufacturer is. I, I don't know if it's Leo Boggs themselves, but definitely doing the switches right. They're not pingy. They just work. They have a good bottom out. Um, they have a pleasant sound. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this keyboard. As always, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions for mods or anything that you want me to take a look at when I come back to this keyboard, because I will be disassembling it and maybe doing a foamless click, who knows, and getting crazy with it. So if you guys got any ideas for anything interesting that you'd like to see, Please place them down in the comments below. I read each and every single one of them and do my best to answer any questions as quickly as possible. So, for now, enjoy the sound test of the Leobot Hi 75 with the um, Nim yeah, Nimbus linear switches and the blue and purple MDA, what I believe is PBT, but they're double shot 1.6 millimeter keycaps and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.